Hello everyone, my name is Barrick, and I am the creator of Dread, a top-down action horror roguelike that's currently in Alpha. But many of you also know me as the co-founder of a group called the Redstone Development Foundation, or the RDF. The RDF is a group of engineers who've gotten together to make cool little devices like calculators, computers, and games using Minecraft's Redstone game mechanic. Today I'm going to be blending together both of my online personas and also show off some of the capabilities of the Dread Engine in a tribute to the RDF. Using Dread's built-in level editor, I've created a seven-segment display. Now what is a seven-segment display? Well, a seven-segment display is basically a number display, the same kind of thing that you would see on an alarm clock or a digital watch, and it displays the numbers zero through nine. And that's exactly what this does with the push of this switch. When I hit switch, it switches to zero. Hit the switch again, it goes to one, two, three, and so on. With each press of the use key on the switch, it goes through and cycles to a new number and then resets back to zero. It works by using what is essentially a simplified programming language called triggers to hide and then show the appropriate walls at the appropriate time. So let's take a look and see how that works. When I select the Triggers tab in the Level Editor, you'll see a whole bunch of white boxes pop up. And each one of these white boxes represents a trigger. Now the trigger that are all surrounding the walls have two functions. They're actually double layered. There's two triggers per each one of the walls. One of the triggers hides the wall. The other one shows it. The show wall triggers are just tied into individual groups. So this is group one, group two, group three, and so on. The hiding of the walls is all handled by one cascade. So this trigger, number 15, when activated, activates that trigger, and then that activates that trigger, and then activates that trigger, and so on and so forth, until it hides all of the walls. Then the subsequent rows of triggers over here show the correct wall or correct combination of walls at the correct time. So when the player uses the switch, as you can see by trigger number 29 here, it checks for a value. And that value I call num. And you can welcome to call the value whatever you want. In this case, I just called it num for simplicity's sake. Now num, when num is equal to zero, it will first activate trigger 15, which is the cascading erasing trigger, which uh, hides all of the walls. And then if the trigger does not equal zero, it activates trigger 89, which is this trigger, which I'll get to in a second, and then follows up with trigger 30. Now, the following trigger, after any check value trigger, is only activated if the check value returns true. So if the check value is equal to zero, then it will not only activate trigger 15, which is the erasing, but it also then activates trigger 30, and only then activates trigger 30. Now which one's trigger 30? That is this guy right here. It doesn't have any trigger type. It can only be activated by another trigger. But on activation, it shows this group. The next, and then also follows up with trigger 31 which is this trigger right underneath. And I grouped all the triggers over here just for simplicity's sake to kind of help the layout and make it easier. Uh, all of these triggers could be layered on top of each other, but boy, that would be a pain in the butt to read. But uh, the trigger here, number 30, that then triggers 31, 31 activates group uh, three, or excuse me, group two, which is trigger three here. It gets a little bit more less confusing if you actually take a look at the level. But basically this activates group one, this activates group two, this activates group three, and it cascades all the way through till it reaches the cap trigger, which is this end trigger here. I call it the cap just because it's at the end. Uh, but the cap trigger is trigger number 36, and what it does is it sets the value of num, which this one is looking for, to an additional one. So it adds one to the total value. So now the number is one. Then when the player activates this trigger again, 
you'll see that it'll check to see if the number is zero, which it is not. It is actually one now. So it says, all right, let's activate trigger 89. Trigger 89, which is this little guy right here, then checks for its value, which is the number one. If it finds its value, it also clears the display and then activates trigger number 37, which is this guy, which shows groups uh, one, um, excuse me, groups two and groups three, which are these guys. And then it has the cap trigger, which then adds one to num. And that basically just continues on. So that every time the player pushes the use button, the sequence runs through, it starts here, checks for zero. Is it zero? No. Is it one? No. Is it two? Yes. Okay, then cascade through these triggers with the last trigger adding it to make it three which displays the proper number of segments on the seven segment display. So I hope that you and all my friends at the RDF got a kick out of this video and uh, I hope it also serves to show that there's a lot of things that this engine can do and uh, this is just scratching the surface. Uh, when I was making redstone stuff way back in the day and uh, very beginnings this is one of the first things I made was a seven segment display. So I thought it fitting that it be the first type of engineering device that I create with my own game engine. So thank you for watching. And uh, the link for the download of this map is in the description and it's on the Dread Game blog. So feel free to download it and play with it. See exactly how I did this if it's not entirely clear. And who knows, maybe you can come up with something that's also really cool and fun and utilizes this system to make something that pff, I can't even imagine. And if you do come up with something, by all means, send it to me. I'll post it on the blog and maybe make a little video of it to show it off because I love this kind of stuff in case you haven't figured it out already. So thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.